Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a really fun project for you that meets all of my criteria for crafty goodness. We get to use up a bunch of scraps, we get to play with a bunch of colors and patterns, and we get to do some stamping. So in my book, that is an ace card making project. This video is brought to you by Rubber Stamp Tapestry. You can find them online at pegstamps.com and you can save 20% if you use the coupon code Lindsay17. Check the video description for a list of all the products that I used as well as links to rubber stamp tapestry if the products come from them. So basically what I did was I grabbed colors from my pink, green, and yellow scrap bins. So what I do, if you've never seen my paper organizing video, I uh, basically divide all of my scraps by color, solids and patterns together. If it's a pattern that has like some pink and green in it, I just look at it and say, well, what is it more like more pinkish or more greenish? And I would just put it in that folder. And that really just helps me pick out um, patterns for projects because I tend to go to my scrap bin first. And it also shows me interesting combinations when I see those those uh, patterns and papers together. So that's how I do it. You can do it however you want, but that works for me. It's certainly better than a big random drawer of paper scraps. Let me tell you, I've gone that route. Doesn't really work that well. So what you want to do is punch hexagons or you could use whatever shape you want. Honestly, I just like the way the hexagons kind of nestle and tessellate together. I just think it looks really, really pretty. It reminds me of hexagon quilts kind of. Um, so I'm using that. You could use rectangles or make your own mosaic tile pattern. Whatever you want to do is fine. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and punch all of my um, my printed papers first. And uh, then what we're going to do is get our solids together and do a little stamping. To keep my design from looking too chaotic, I decided to do tone on tone stamping, kind of like we did last week. So I have a scrap of pale green and a speck of kind of buttery yellow. And on the green paper, I'm just stamping a um, just a very pretty multi leaf branch all across the edge. Um, you can do the whole paper, but if you only need four or five punch outs, you don't need to. For the yellow, I ended up using a large daisy and then a smaller filler flower. Because I didn't have as many yellow scraps, I decided I was gonna end up uh, stamping and punching out the entire sheet because I love yellow, it's such a great color. I don't know why I don't have so many scraps of yellow in my scrap bin. I just wanted to make sure that uh, that I had plenty of yellow going on in my card because it's such a cheerful and uplifting color. Um, you just wanna fill in with your smaller stamp after you've got a bunch of the bigger ones down. And when you punch your paper, punch it with the door or the uh, the little hole facing up so you can see exactly where you're punching and you can kind of frame some of your images if you want to. After I had everything stamped and punched, I just kind of made little piles around my workspace of the different colors and patterns so I can easily pick and choose what I want to go next. And then I arranged them on a page in my sketchbook. Um, this probably seems a little weird, but since I have a kind of a bumpy table upstairs and it doesn't stamp very good, I've gotten in the habit of stamping in a, uh, or on a extra um, sketchbook that I have. And because I'm going to be um, paper piecing all of these patterns together and then running them through an embossing folder, um, I didn't want the paper to be too thick, so I didn't want to work on cardstock. I found this sketchbook paper uh, is a little bit uh, heavier than like a typing paper but not as thick as a cardstock so it wouldn't add too much thickness through my um through my embossing folder when I was ready because I'm going to use one of those really thick ones that has the multi-level embossing and I just didn't want to damage it or risk damaging it once you know where you want your patterns to go, you've kind of laid it out on your paper, you can start gluing it down. As I'm gluing it down, I decided I liked a thinner border of the white, so I just kind of uh, nudged them in a little bit closer together when I did my final glue down. I'm using Zip Dry Glue, which is a glue I haven't used yet, but I've had it in my stash for quite a while, and I have to say I really like it, so I'll be using it a lot more. So finish gluing that down. When you get to the parts where you've got a little bit, um, you know, you've got like half a hex on and you need to fill in, you can cut your punch shapes to fit into those little areas. Then you want to let this dry completely before you go on to the next step. Now, if you have a bunch of hexagons left over, I urge you to put them to use right now. Don't save them in a little baggie thinking you're gonna make a background 10 months down the road, it's not gonna happen. Grab another piece of paper and start gluing hexagons down if you think you want another page of this. I know it's very pretty and it's gonna be very hard to cut into, so I went ahead and made a whole other page with more hexagons because I just couldn't bear to part with it. Another thing, if uh, this looks a little too chaotic to you, maybe your colors were brighter and bolder, you can take some white gesso or some thinned down uh, acrylic paint after the glue's dry and you can brush it over there and give it kind of a white wash look to make it all fade out a little bit and look a little bit more shabby chic. So that's another option for you if the colors are too bright for you. 
Now we're going to tear this paper right out of the sketchbook. I know it's kind of scary, but don't worry. That's why they have perforated pages. It'll come out just fine. And we're going to trim this into a couple of card bases. Now this uh, sketchbook will give me just about two perfect um, layers for five by seven cards. So I am doing it that size so I don't waste much. The first step is to trim off any of the odd bits from the edges and then basically cut it into two uh, four and a half by six and a half inch panels. Quick tip, it's much easier to cut this on the back side of the paper and not on the side of the paper that you did all of the paper piecing, so keep that in mind. This step is completely optional, but I thought it would give my kind of hexagon pattern a very quilty look, so I want to emboss uh, the paper here. Now my paper panel is bigger than the embossing folder I want to use so what I have done is basically put it halfway in the um, the embossing folder. I'm using one of those thick next level ones so I only need one uh, pad and I've also disengaged two of the tabs just to make sure the sandwich would be pretty loose because my paper is going to be of varying thicknesses due to the papers and cardstocks I used. I just wanted to make sure I didn't put too much pressure on the, um, on the plates. Uh, so now what I'm doing is I've got to emboss the other half of that panel so I've got a little piece of washi tape on my finger because it's really low tack I know it's not gonna rip my paper and I am lining up the hexagons because I'm using like a honeycomb type pattern I'm lining that up with the folder again and I'm gonna have at least two or three rows overlap that way um, I can hopefully get a very seamless uh, transition now as long as you don't pack your uh, embossing machine, your die cutting machine really tight as long as you have kind of, uh, it's not a super super tight sandwich um, so you're just going for a subtle emboss. As long as you don't have it really tight you should be able to do a seamless transition and emboss the entire piece of paper just fine. Um, if you feel any, like if it's hard to crank through you're going to get a seam. If it's hard to crank through you're doing it too deeply. You just want a very gentle embossing here and this is going to work with any embossing folder whether it's one of the next level ones or if it's just a trend, a regular one. As long as you have a repeating pattern that you can kind of match up it'll work just fine. And I really like the way that looks. I think it adds a lot. But I did leave one panel unembossed so you'll get to see the difference at the end. I chose a soft craft colored card base for my card because I think it's so complimentary when you have kind of like buttery pastel colors. I took one of the other pink scraps that I didn't end up stamping on and decided to put that on the inside of my card because sometimes uh, it can be difficult to see writing on craft card bases. Now remember what I said about those scraps don't hoard them, use them up right now because I guarantee they're never gonna be just right for any project in the future. Trust me, I've had so many little baggies of punches and die cuts kicking around my craft room thinking I'll use them someday and someday just doesn't come, so use it now. Make a whole other page of um, hexagon paper if you want to with it, but I urge you to use it now instead of putting it off. So one thing I like to do with scraps is to decorate the inside of my cards with it. So um, I thought maybe that little sliver would be enough to do the inside. Um, I thought, that some hexagons would look pretty just kind of embellishing and I also thought some pretty washi tape would be nice because it gives you um a little hint of pattern but it's also kind of translucent so I grabbed a few neutral colors either black on white or black on cream or brown on cream and just added them to kind of make a little bit of a border around my card and I think it just gives it such a nice touch plus I am vowing to use up my hoard of washi tape I have so much that just doesn't get used enough. So I really just need to uh, need to keep thinking when I'm making a card, what do I have that could accent this? What do I have that, you know, hasn't been used in a while that would really be kind of fun and add a special touch? I adhered the embossed panel to the front of this card with some um, ATG adhesive. Any double stick tape will work great. And um, it's pretty as is, but I decided I wanted to layer up some gorgeous goodies. And so I went down to my room of hoarded stash and I found some lovely things that have been too precious to use until now. This is um, a die cut felt. It is or was from Queen and Company probably about 10 years ago and it's been sitting there waiting for the perfect project which I decided any project's gonna be the perfect project now I'm gonna use my awesome things that I've been hoarding and um, we're gonna stick this down I was kind of worried that the adhesive might have permanently stuck to the backing and I wouldn't be able to use it but luckily I was able to pull it free and when you are working with die cut felt um, I really recommend you just kind of pull off the backing paper on one edge and uh, then stick that down before you attempt to remove the rest of the backing paper because this can be 
very sticky and tricky to work with otherwise. So I'm getting that edge down there, especially if you're using this on like a scrapbook layout or a art journal page where you have a larger expanse to cover. That can be a nightmare if the because um, it's really, really sticky stuff. If it gets attached to itself, you've got to throw it away. It's it's pretty uh, tough. So start um, getting one end anchored down and then gently remove the rest of your backing paper and you can press that in place. And it will stretch a little bit as you're working. So um, you don't really need to cut it extra long. You just cut it to just about the size that you need and then um, trim off the excess. And um, and I just think it's a lovely look. Now, this is a really wide one. If you have die cut felt from back in the day and it's narrower, you can trim it down the center before you remove the backing paper and um, put that down in two strips on your card and then use a piece of ribbon to kind of bridge the gap and then it'll look like you have a nice uh, luxurious wide piece of die cut felt. Wow, that was a lot of die cut felt footage. I hope you found that interesting. Oh my goodness, I probably should have edited that out. Uh, so now I'm just going to trim off the excess and we can do our next layer. I thought burlap would be a really amazing texture to have next to the fuzzy softness of the felt. So I cut a little a scrap of wired burlap about um, an inch longer than it needed to be. And then I just folded over about a half an inch on each side just to kind of finish it off. Burlap is known for fraying. So I just wanted to kind of tuck that away. Now, if you wanted to, you could do all of this decorating on the embossed panel, um, adhere it to the back with glue, and then just glue it down to your craft card base. I didn't really know where I was going at the beginning of this card, so I'm kind of um, making it up as I go along, so I'm just folding over the edges to kind of hem them. Now I'm finding the zip dry glue worked just fine for the ribbon, um, and when I put up on more layers, uh, because the ribbon is a little porous and that ribbon has like holes in it, I know that when I glue things on top, it'll be the glue will be able to kind of go down through those holes and help secure everything. But I'm taking advantage of the fact that the ribbon is wired on the edges, so um, I can put glue along that and it won't seep through and show. So then just uh, press that down and um, that will stick on top of the felt. So you can see what I mean. If you had a thinner piece of felt, you could have cut it in the middle and spread it apart uh, and it will look like you have more. So there's a little trick that you can do there. At this point of the video, I really have to thank you guys for giving me confidence in my handwriting. I've never been a fan of my handwriting, but um, I had done a couple cards where I used my just hand wrote a sentiment and I got some really lovely comments from you guys. So thank you so much. It gave me the confidence to break out these glazed jelly roll gel pens and write my sentiment. These pens are kind of fun because they look like you have an, a stamped and embossed image when you're done. So um, my tip here is just to go slow when you write uh, because the ink is is kind of um, thick and it needs to flow out of the pen and that's how you get that nice raised image. If you go too fast, you're not going to get a raised image and it's going to kind of skip a little bit. But I just wrote thank you twice because I'm making two cards and I also wanted to show you how slow you have to go. That's going to take a couple minutes to dry so I'm going to set that aside while I uh, finished embellishing the rest of this card. I found another delightful surprise while hunting through the room of stash today. I found a beautiful ribbon that I had picked up for a whopping 50 cents, which apparently still was too precious for me to use all these years. I decided it is going on this card. It's a lovely um, kind of moss green satin ribbon with a little pico edge and some embroidery in the middle. And I thought, boy, a little of this is really going to go a long way on a card. Um, I wanted to wrap it around and tie it. So I had that secondary texture of a knot and the smooth texture of the satin ribbon. I thought it would be great with a rough burlap and the fuzzy felt. So I made a little slit on the fold of the card and just fed that ribbon right through. And um, I, you could tie this in a bow if you wanted to. I think a simple knot would suffice for this. Otherwise, it may be a little bit too overwhelming. And uh, yeah, I'm keeping this in real time because everyone says they love the real time. You could actually see how gummy I am when I try to put a card together. Um, I'm just going to do a simple knot. And I think those stacked three textures are fantastic. And it's a great way to add... Um, just a little something extra to a card, I think. I thought I might want a flower on this card as well. So I took apart a big chrysanthemum flower. I think I got it at the Dollar Tree. Um, and I kind of folded it and thought maybe I could tuck that in here or there. But it was just a little bit too much for this. And it kind of dwarfed the um, embossed panel in the background that I really wanted to show off because we spent so much time on it. I did, however, really like the buttons that I picked out for this card. So I decided that maybe a little bit of string and uh, the buttons would be just the right touch. I trimmed the word thank you into a strip and notched the edge and 
I decided to adhere that to the top, towards the top of my card, and then I just used a little bit of that zip dry glue on the back of the buttons to adhere them over the ribbon. Now, when you've got lumpy, bumpy things that don't really want to lay flat when you try to glue them, one tip I have is to take an acrylic stamping block and lay it on top, and then you can put something heavier on top if you need to. That'll keep it in place while it dries without worrying about any glue seepage making it stick. For some reason, glue does not like to stick to those acrylic blocks, and it works like a charm. I decided to go ahead while all my supplies were out and decorate that other card using the other panel that I had left, the one that wasn't embossed. I did end up using another piece of burlap ribbon that had a little lace trim on the sides. It's by Offray. I just thought it was darling and I've had it in my stash for a few years. And I folded up one of those um, layers of the chrysanthemum from the Dollar Tree, a fl flower you know, bundle. And um, I just folded it in half and in half again and I'm sticking it down with a little bit of glue. And I'm kind of wishing I had another set of hands because because I'm making such a glue mess here. Um, I needed something to anchor that flower down a little bit because just the uh, little thank you flag didn't look impressive enough. So I'm taking a punched out hexagon, one that's um, a little bit more sturdy. It's from like more of a cardstocky paper. And um, then I am gluing the thank you on top and I am going to put another uh, stamping block down on that and wait it while it dries. And there you have it, two really pretty cards that are really great to have on hand. Here you can see the quilted texture from our embossing folder. It's very subtle because we didn't put a lot of pressure uh, through our machine when we did it, but I think it's a lovely effect. It's very quilty looking. And here you have more of a modern look without the embossing, but um, just think of all the varieties you can come up with with the scraps and stamps that you have on hand. If you don't have any pattern paper, that's totally fine. You can use your peg stamps to make up loads and loads of patterns. Use your uh, sponges or color dusters to get to the background inked if you want to and come up with a very similar technique. It's all up to you. I took all my extra hexagons and made another page in my scrapbook because or my sketchbook because I know that I will really want to use that on an art journal page. I want to thank Rubber Stamp Tapestry for sponsoring this video today. I will link to the products I used from them in the video description. Check out their beautiful sets of peg stamps. They are a great way to begin stamping and they are so versatile. Use the coupon code Lindsay17 to save 20% on your peg stamp order and uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and until then, happy crafting!